Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. That's a really good one. Good for grounding. I'm recording already. <laughs> we entered the time portal, baby, where it just yeah. time is illusory, it doesn't exist. Welcome to Openly Spoken, the podcast to help you show up, speak out, and be seen. Here you'll get to eavesdrop on connected women's conversations about self-love, confidence, healing, relationships, creativity, and more. I'm your host, Celia Antonio, and I am your guide to getting you grounded into your body, feeling your full spectrum of emotion, and expanding your fullest self-expression. I also pop in here from time to time with solo episodes where I give you tips, tricks, and resources like meditations, visualizations, and all the things to get you grounded, to get you to feel, to get you to alchemize, and to get you to expand and express yourself fully. I'm so grateful that you're here, and I invite you to now put your hands on your heart, take a deep breath, set a tone for how you want to be as you show up for this podcast, take what resonates in this podcast, leave out what doesn't resonate, and take some time to reflect and to contemplate. And if there's anything in the podcast you want to chat about, you can always reach out to me on Instagram at self -express Babe. Thank you so much for being here. Now let's get started. All right, we are live on YouTube. I'm not sure if this is picking up my video. Hopefully it is. If not, we are also recording a backup on Riverside. So hi, my name is Celia. I am the host of Openly Spoken. I just woke up not too long ago, still in my pajamas, and I've been wanting to record this solo episode um, as my 34th birthday is coming up on December 2nd. I wanted to share a couple of lessons that my 33rd year of life kind of uh, gave me um, because going into turning 33, I was really excited uh, because in the spiritual community, 33 is an important number. Um, it's often spoken about as like the Jesus year. So I was very excited. I'm like, oh, it's my Jesus year. It's going to be a great year. And um, this year has been great. It's been very great. It's just not what I expected at all. Um, it's definitely been the most um, quiet year in terms of me showing up online. I'm usually very vocal online, posting a lot, posting regularly. But this year, I just did not have capacity for that because of this rigorous uh coaching certification program I've been in for sex, love, and relationship coaching. And that's just been very great. And I joined that last year, so in October of 2022. So I'm already working with clients and this work is just so amazing, so much depth to it. But enough about my work. I, wa I would love to get into these lessons. Um, another update I do want to give though is this year and even last year, but like this year specifically was so pivotal, pivotal, pivotal to me that I am planning on reintroducing myself next year as just Leah. So short for my name, Celia, it's spelled C-I-L-I-A. So I would just go by L-I-A, Leah, because it feels like I'm stepping into a new embodiment of womaning if that makes sense and it just feels like I need a new name like Celia to me I, I love her and I love the name Celia but the embodiment of Celia like it just feels like that chapter is coming to an end and that that chapter is um very young and very you know like a maiden and Leah just feels like grown up <laughs> that's the only way I could really describe it but I will be um this podcast will be going on on a break for the rest of fall this will be the last thing that I um release besides a trailer for season six because I've already recorded most of it and the guests are just chef's kiss um lost my train of thought now what were we talking about I got distracted by talking to you about season six. Um, 
yeah, during the break, I am planning on doing like a little initiation into womanhood kind of like ceremony for myself uh, because one of the, it just, that just feels like something I need. And one of the things I'm specializing in with my sex, love and relationship coaching program, we're at the point in the program now where we've just chosen our specialty, our major, and the whole like group of hundreds of women who are all studying sex, love and relationships are now going in these different directions of people who want to specialize in working with couples, people who want to work, uh, work with men, like all these different specialties. And the specialty I chose is very ritualistic. There's a lot of ritual to it. There's a lot of like, um, ceremony to honor different seasons of life, uh, that major is called life transitions. I'm also majoring in female sexuality. So with that, um, major of life transition, seeing how ceremonial it is and ritualistic it is, I'm like, okay, I'm making myself a little ritual and I'm coming out on the other side as Leah. So you have a heads up that I will be calling myself Leah in 2024 and I will eventually make some sort of reintroduction post for that. We've actually already put that name on my Instagram to start. That's like the first step I've taken. Okay, so let's get into these lessons from 33. 33. Mm. I first want to celebrate that being 33, I don't feel old. And yet when I was 23, 33 sounded so old. And when I was 23, I just remember being like, oh, I'm going to be 30 in seven years. And even when I was 25, 27, I was like freaking out about 30 being around the corner. And then by the time I turned 30, I was like, it's just an age. It doesn't, there's no, I guess this is a, le- I guess this is a, le- a lesson that could be added to these lessons from 33, but it's not necessarily something I learned this year, but There's no point in um, dwelling over being old when you're 30, when you're 40, when you're 50, because age is inevitably going to happen. And this is something I told one of my family members sometime last year. We all took a family photo and this family member saw herself in the picture that we had just taken on someone's phone. And this family member was like, I look old. So then I told them, I was like, okay, but 20 years from now, when you're like 90, you're going to look at this photo and you're going to say, oh, look how young I looked. And it's going to be a little sad to be in that position and, and say, look how young I looked and to know that you didn't feel young, you didn't enjoy your time because you were so preoccupied with being quote unquote old and um what is old anyways you know it's 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 a made-up concept that's that's all i want to say so i hope that that's helpful to anyone listening okay so the first thing i want to share i have a couple of notes i did a little bit of journaling right before this the first thing i want to share is that actually I want to keep this, share this one first. Okay. The first thing I want to share is that fear is here to keep you safe, which you probably already know. Um, but most people online, when they talk about fear, they talk about like ignoring the fear or, or having fear and doing the thing anyways. And the lesson that I learned this year is that If you are holding your fear and doing the thing anyways, you're kind of gaslighting yourself. Just got a text. Hold on. Let me just silence my phone. That's my sister. Hi, Alicia. Maybe she'll see this video one day and she'll know that that was her text. So um, if you have fear and you just do the thing anyways, you're kind of gaslighting yourself. You're kind of spiritually bypassing yourself. And... um, What happens also when you do that, in my opinion, you can't be fully authentic with the action that you're taking because there's this part of you that you're like rejecting and at a subtle subconscious level, when you reject any part of yourself, you have to compensate for that in some way. 
And then you start to create this persona and this energy that's not fully you, that's not fully authentic. And so what I say to do instead of just, you know, ignoring your fear, what I found more helpful for me is to listen, to listen to the fear. And I'm not saying to like, if your fear tells you, don't ever start a business, don't ever put yourself on a dating app, don't ever, you know, I'm not saying to let your fear stop you from doing things. I'm just saying to listen to it, make the space to slow down and listen to it first and um, let it know that you care about it because this is a part of you. It's probably most likely your inner child. Um, it could be other things, but mo most likely it's the inner child. Let this part know that it is honored, that you love it, and listen to it. Actually listen to it. And then from there, you can take your power back and you can let the thing know that you're, you are listening and you love them and also you are the one in charge, not the fear. And um, I think this is very important to do because when you ignore the fear and you're doing the thing anyways, it sounds like you are taking control, but really the fear still at a subconscious subtle level, which is, you know, the subconscious is such a powerful thing even though it's subtle, the fear is really what's in control. The fear is really what's calling the shots if you're just ignoring it and doing the thing anyway. So that's the first thing I want to share. Um, and then the second thing, I'm just going to check my notes because I think I wrote a couple of things. Okay. Another thing I wanted to share on the same topic real quick is that a lot of people talk about being multifaceted. And this piece about listening to your fear is a part of that. Fear is one of your facets. It's one of your natural human experiences, human emotions. We all feel fear. We all, we all do. And the more you deny it, the less of yourself you can be. And the less of yourself you can be, that's just going to affect everything in life. Absolutely everything. So kind of related to the topic of fear is the second thing I want to share is that feeling safe is all about trusting yourself. Feeling safe is all about self-trust because when you learn to trust yourself and one of the ways you learn to trust yourself could be listening to your fear, right? The more you listen to all parts of yourself, the more you feel safe into relaxing into who you really are and the more you can relax into who you really are the better boundaries you can set the better discernment you can have with who you spend time with and who you have in your inner circles and um, you also then start to embody and ground in this uh, belief that no matter what happens I'll be okay because I've got me and, and that self, that level of self-trust will create so much safety and, um, you can be safe no matter where you go, because first of all, you won't go to certain places if you're trusting yourself, because you're going to be listening to your intuition, right? And even if you do find yourself in a situation where you notice it's unsafe, you're going to be aware that it's, that it's not safe because you're trusting what's coming up within you as it comes up. And you, yeah, you'll, you'll just know what to do. You'll know how to have your own back. So that was the second thing I wanted to share. And then the, okay, I'm smiling because there's, there's a big one I want to say for the end. Okay. So third is, um, you become more of yourself when you connect with others. And um, alone time, I'm just going to drink some water. Alone time really is important. And the space where you can do um, healing work, self-discovery work, um, gaining clarity, learning, that is all valid and valuable. I'm not saying to never do that. 
But something I've noticed is that people kind of tend to stay in that. And I think you're missing out when you don't have enough social interaction. And um, this obviously will be different for, you know, if you're like neurodivergent, um, you know, some people have like different constitutions and socializing is just not their cup of tea. But for the majority of the population, I would say that you know yourself more when you socialize because you've probably already heard that relationships are a mirror. Other people are mirrors, right? So if you never have a mirror that shows you who you really are, then you stop seeing who you really are. You stop having that clarity and then add a, add a subtle layer, like a subconscious layer, your being starts feeling like it's disappearing. It starts to feel like it's not there. So other, and, and also like when you interact with other people, it's magical what someone else can see in you that you can't see. So for example, um, if a friend is uh, reflecting back to you just how great of a mom you are, for example, or like how great you did this one thing, that is so valuable because you being in your own experience in your head and your body, but probably mostly in your head, it's hard to really notice your strengths um, because we tend to focus on how we can be better, how we can do better. You know, we're really trained by society at large to be that way, that when we have other people reflecting that, it really helps us see ourselves better. And also when there's something very beautiful about when we give our time and our energy and our love to other people because, you know, a truth that I really, really do carry is that we are all one. So when you have that ability to give to other people, you're also giving to yourself. It's like this, like feedback loop. And um, I could really go off on a huge, like spiritual talk tangent thing about that, but I am not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so the fourth lesson, the last lesson I want to share is probably a hard pill to swallow, but it's once you, once you do swallow it and you do, um, accept this, it's not only liberating, but it can really, really help you to thrive. And that is that nobody Nobody, 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 nobody can unconditionally, unconditionally love you besides yourself. Nobody but yourself can unconditionally love you because other people, even though they might come really close, they still have their own filters. They still have their past memories of you. They still have all these things, like they still have a filter, a lens that they're seeing through. No matter how clean those lenses are, it's still impossible for a person outside of yourself to unconditionally love you. And this can be a very hard pill to swallow. Um, it was definitely eye-opening to me because I'm like, wait, my husband unconditionally loves me. What are you talking about? Um, but when you can accept this truth, I think it's very liberating because you get to step into, you know, basically everything that we've talked about. Like you get to trust yourself more. You get to fall into yourself. You get to be, for me, what this, what comes up in this is like, you get to be your own parent. You get to have check-ins with yourself. Like if you know that unconditionally loving who you are is your job, your self-care, your self-love routine or habits or how you approach that is probably going to change a lot. So yeah, I would love to know what you think about these four lessons. Feel free to pop a comment below. 
Um, and then this podcast will be on a break starting now <laughs> all the way until, I mean, I will be in the comments um, popping in for, you know, the, probably the rest of this month, but we will be on a break until either February or March. I haven't like fully decided which day, um, but I do have all the most, of, I think all of them actually, um, episodes recorded for the next season. So I will be releasing a trailer so that you can have a little sneak peek. And in the meantime, if you have been following me for a while, if you're loving my vibe and you are wondering how to support me, some of the ways you can work with me this year is first, I have a breast massage course for women. It's called Heart Magic. It is definitely a place to play into your multifaceted, to step into self, your multi, your multifaceted layers. I don't know how I said that, but it's definitely a place to embrace your multifacetedness. It's a place to fall in love with yourself, fall in love with your body. And it's just such a beautiful practice. There are two practices in there. There's some embodiment practices in there as well. <clears throat> and um, what's really exciting is that the people that have signed up, when they do a practice once, it's like completely it changes so much. And I had that same experience when I discovered rest massage. So that was why I wanted to create it. And also my like inner child when I was 12 is, is so present here right now and so excited that I even have this course and that I have other women in it. Because at that age, I felt so insecure about my breasts. And um, when I had this idea to create it, I think it was born... I think the idea was starting to form in 2021. And at that time, I just started setting up calls with women just to like, let's talk about boobs. And um, honestly, every woman I met, they all have a story around their boobs. Too big, too small, weird size, weird shape. And yeah, so this course is a place to release all of that conditioning and come back home to yourself. So that's one of the ways you can work with me. I also have a VIP day available, and this is a three hour day fully dedicated to you so that you can step into um, bigger self-expression, deeper and more fulfilling relationships and self-love. So I'll include that link in the comments below. And uh, yeah, those for now are the two ways you can work with me. And in 2024, I will be opening up one-on-one -on -one work so stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you're watching on YouTube and you're not subscribed yet, please hit that little subscribe button and the thumbs up if you enjoyed this. It feels so weird to say that, but like every YouTuber says that and they tell you in marketing to say that, otherwise people won't do it, but hopefully you did that. <laughs> and I appreciate it. And yeah, we'll end here and I will see you all in a couple months. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Openly Spoken. I know that there's an abundance of content online, so I really appreciate you giving me your ears today. If this episode shifted something for you, please share this with a friend and slash or write us a podcast review if you're listening to this on iTunes so that more people can find this. If anything shifted for you from this episode that you want to have a conversation about, I would love to hear from you. Just send me a DM over on Instagram at self babe, and that is in the show notes. Thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.